Hi, I'm Jen Kobrick, a holistic family consultant with the Consciously Parenting Project. Today, I want to tell a story about something that we've been doing recently in our house, uh, which we call BF time. Uh, BF stands for Boba Fett because the first time we did it, my son wanted to be Boba Fett and have my husband be Han Solo. And the name stuck, even though that's not always exactly how it how we pretend uh, in this time. Uh, so to backtrack a little bit, uh, my son has always reacted very physically to big feelings. Um, ever since he was really small, when he is upset or hurt or angry or sad or scared or lonely, um, he reacts very physically. And this can look like trying to bite or hit or kick. Um, and we, for the most part, are able to, you know, block his shots and keep our bodies safe. And sometimes we need to remove him to a spot where there's more space for him to move without, you know, breaking things or hurting anyone, like on his bed, for example, nice soft area he can flail around. But since my daughter was born almost a year and a half ago, <clears throat> it's not always as easy to know when that energy is going to come out and she's much less able to protect her body. So as much as possible, of course, we try to see these things coming and connect before he gets to the point of lashing out physically. And recently, uh, near the start of this pandemic, uh, as his anxiety was mounting, as all of these changes to his routine and his daily life were happening, we were starting to see more and more and more of this. And it seemed like he was on a hair trigger a lot of the time. And no matter how much we'd try to connect, it was like it wasn't really quite going in far enough. And uh, finally, I realized that uh, what might be happening is that what he might actually need is an outlet for that aggressive energy because that aggressive energy is not coming out because he's, you know, a bad kid or he's, um, you know, trying to hurt people. It's coming out because when he's in fight or flight in survival mode, his natural mode is fight. And that's actually my mode too. So it, once I made that connection, it actually made it, it really relatable for me. And so the healthy thing to do with that energy is to discharge it, to move our bodies and, and use all of that mobilized energy. Because when we don't, when we try to force it to shut down, that can be really damaging. You know, then we internalize all of that energy and, and we feel powerless and stuck if we can't let it out. But that doesn't mean that it's okay for him to, you know, bite us or kick the dog or beat up his little sister. So it occurred to me that maybe what he needs is a container in which he can be aggressive and hit and punch and kick and not have anybody get hurt. Because really, as an adult, it's pretty easy to not get hurt by the shots of a small child if I see them coming, right? If I'm not getting suddenly, you know, punched in the gut while I'm in the middle of cooking dinner, but I'm braced for it and I'm ready for it, then, you know, he can knock me over onto his bed over and over and over again, or, you know, or I can hold his arms and let him push and, and very slowly win knocking me over. So one day when this was really particularly frustrating and it just seemed like it was constant, I finally said, okay, let's go in your room and set a timer for five minutes. And for five minutes, you attack. You attack with everything you've got and we'll attack back. And I believe that first time that it was my, that it was my husband that did it and I was with my daughter, but we take turns. Um, and sometimes he requests one of us or the other. Um, but, and then afterwards, it was so effective for five minutes he was throwing punches. He was, you know, pretending to shoot 
he was, uh, you know, knocking my husband over, climbing on his back, you know, laughing hysterically the entire time, you know, as my husband gave him just enough resistance to make it a challenge, but always letting my son win. So he got to feel powerful. He got to discharge that energy. He got to have somebody saying, yeah, it's okay to feel this way. It's okay to feel angry and frustrated and to not know what to do with this energy. That's all okay. And then at the end of it, he said, okay, the timer's up. What do you need to do to, to be able to be peaceful right now? And he gave a big hug and, and did a big, <laughs> made a big show of turning a pretend switch on the wall and saying, okay, now we're in creative mode. We're all friends. And so ever since then, uh, he will ask usually about once a day now. At first, it was two or three times a day. Uh, and after a few weeks, it's gone down to once a day and um, and occasionally we'll offer it. You know, if we see that he's kind of getting out of control and off the rails, then we'll say, hey, it looks like maybe you could use some BF time. But after that first time, when he had calmed down, we kind of talked about it and we said, you know, how did that feel to you? And he said that it was really fun. And he obviously was feeling a lot calmer because he was, you know, he was calm and cooperative and so much more easygoing than he had been in days for the rest of the day. Um, and so we, we asked him to give it a name, which is how it came up with being BF time. And he said it wants to keep that name, even if he's not always going to be Boba Fett. And he's not. Uh, and he's really into Minecraft. So a lot of times he is a, a hostile mob from Minecraft. And uh, and he's, you know, blowing up on us or firing arrows at us or pushing us into lava or um, all manner of creative things. And so we just continue this and he'll ask for, for three to five minutes of this. And, um, and I find that usually by five minutes, he's done even before the timer goes off, you know, that he's kind of stopped attacking and has gone into telling us a story or building something or something like that. Um, but generally we, we keep it engaged and very physical. There's a lot of wrestling that happens during this time. Um, the key, if you want to try something like this to um, to help let out some aggression in a in a healthy and safe container, there's a couple of keys. Uh, one is that if at all possible, discuss it in advance and come up with some agreements with your child about how it's going to look, you know, if there are limits. Like, for example, we don't let him bite us even during this time. That's an agreement that there's not going to be any biting um, even during BF time. Um, and you agree on an amount of time, uh, which might vary depending on the day. <clears throat> might require some experimentation to figure out what's right for your child and also might depend on you know, who, whether someone else is available to watch another child. Um, at first, this was something that needed to happen pretty immediately. You know, if he asked for BF time, it had to be right then. And as we've been doing this for, for almost two months now, now if, you know, if one of us is in the middle of something and he asks for BF time and, you know, it, he can wait um, as much as an hour sometimes. Uh, for someone to be available to to take care of my daughter so that the BF time can happen without there being any uh, side casualties. Um, so that's really important. Another thing that's really important is to, if your child wants to be able to say, you know, oh, that hurts. Oh, no, no, don't get me. All of that sort of thing. Or if you want to be able to say those things um, and have the other person not stop when you say that, have that be part of the play, then you need to agree on a safe word. And even a young child can agree on a safe word. Uh, my son's is fire banana. So if he says, oh no, no, ow, ah, then we keep going. We know that that's part of the play. If he says fire banana, that means he's actually hurt and he wants us to stop. Um, and, and likewise for the adult, because it's totally possible for a child to, to hit you harder or, you know, in a different angle than you were prepared for and have that actually hurt and be, need to be able to agree on, you know, the safe word means we stop, make sure everybody's okay, and then we can restart. 
Um, so that's the main, uh, main things that I want to talk about. And now I want to talk just a little bit about the people who might be going, oh my God, let my child hit me. What are you crazy? And so to that, I'm not going to go into that uh, at a super uh, huge length today. If you have specific questions or concerns about doing that, put them in the comments and I'll come back and address them another time uh, because there's a lot of different directions that that could go. So I'm not going to try to cover all of it. <clears throat> but I know that one of the main concerns that people have is that if you allow something, you'll end up getting more of it. And so to that, I want to say that with children, a need met will go away and a need unmet is here to stay. So if the child has a need for connection that's not getting met, which absolutely can be met in lots of other ways, although some children have a very physical way of relating, and if that's your child, they may need some really physical interaction to really feel connected. So children might have a need to release some pent up frustration, anxiety, worry, fear, uh, aggression, and all of those can come out as this physical fight or flight response. So they might need something like this or they might need something like going for a run or a bike ride together. So allowing that energy to move discharges all of that. You know, everything that your child has mobilized in case they need to fight off a saber-toothed tiger has to go somewhere. So allowing a safe container to discharge that and to connect at the same time allows them to come back into their more rational thinking mind. And we've actually seen a lot less aggression. And I know that I'm not the only person who's experienced that because I've gotten this idea from other parents who've tried similar things and have also ultimately seen a lot less aggression from their child. Because once the need is met, the needs for connection, the needs to discharge that aggressive energy, the need to be seen and heard and validated that it's okay to feel angry and frustrated and grumpy and, you know, unsettled. Once all of those needs have been met, they go away. And life happens, so they come back again because we're never done having frustrating things happen. But once the backlog is dealt with, then it's just the day to day, you know? Then it's just, oh my God, my sister knocked over my Lego creation five times and I'm going to scream. Instead of it being a whole backlog of all this stuff has been happening lately that I feel out of control about and I need to deal with. Uh, so if you have other concerns or questions about how to implement something like this in your family, let me know. If you try it and it goes badly or it goes really well, let me know. If it goes badly, then, then definitely let me know and we'll see if we can figure out what went wrong and how we can tweak it to make it work better in your family. And if it goes really well, then definitely share that so that I can celebrate with you. And if you have some kind of special challenge, um, like maybe an adult who is not physically able to, to get on the floor and wrestle with a child or something like that, and you want to figure out some brainstorming about how to adapt it to your specific situation, then let me know that. Um, and as always, if you find this helpful, like, comment, and share it with anyone that you think might need this idea. And you can always find the rest of the Consciously Parenting's COVID-19 uh, free and low cost resources at www.consciouslyparenting.com slash COVID-19. And as always, that link will be in the notes. And I will see you soon. Have a great week.